All right. All right, you guys, thank you for being here on this uh, Wednesday night. Uh, um, I know it's kind of a last minute thing, but we really want to say thank you for those who are on. And then maybe those who will see this at a later time, uh, we really appreciate you. So tonight, um, I promise I won't be long. Um, give me like 12, 15 minutes and uh, we'll let you keep on moving with your day. Amen. So um, if you have any questions or concerns while I am uh, teaching, please feel free to unmute and um, jump right on in, okay? Please, let's do that. But tonight, uh, let's open up with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you tonight. We pray you tonight. We lift you tonight, Lord. And we just say thank you for this day, this day that you have made. Uh, we will rejoice and be glad in it, Father God. I ask, Father God, that you just watch over us and strengthen us and help us, Lord, as, as we go into this word, that you would give us clarity and understanding, Father God, and be able to take this word and apply it to our lives, but not only that, be able to share it with someone, Father God, that they might draw closer to you. Lord, we love you and we praise you and we give you thanks. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. So on tonight, what I uh, want to talk to real briefly, talk to you about real briefly is... Uh, discipleship uh being a good disciple and disciple is just uh you know once you have accepted christ and and you are uh you are saved then the discipleship process begins but to be a disciple basically just says that you are a a follower of christ that you are um uh that you are a, a student of the word of God, that you are, you know, that you are coachable, that you're teachable, and that you want to learn more about uh, the word of God. And as you do that, then you grow spiritually as a disciple. And then as you grow spiritually and you get stronger, then you are able to move on and to disciple other individuals. Uh, amen. But you can't do that until you are strengthened and you have to be strengthened in the word. That's what we're going to talk about uh, tonight. So look, in Hebrews chapter four, if you have it, go to your Bible. If you have your cell phone, look at it with me. Uh, Hebrews chapter four. Let's look at verse 12. If you have it, your Bibles or let's look at uh, if you have your cell phone. Go with me, please. Hebrews. 4 verse 12 it says for the word of god is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart uh the scripture there is talking about the word of God and how in comparison to a sword, it cuts coming and going. What does that mean? That means that the truth that's in the word um, is so powerful and so quick. God's word is so powerful and quick that, man, sometimes it cuts is because the truth that it's talking about is talking about us. <laughs> And sometimes that is tough and it cuts. And the Bible says it cuts so deep, like it really does. It cuts deep. Like, um, for example, uh, you know, I, 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 I kind of shed a little light on this the other day, but I will talk to you guys about it, that, you know, it amazes me. And uh, I don't know if you may have heard me share just a little bit earlier with Sister Marlin about how we do or we are a part of or we support what we consider important to us. What do I mean by that? So I said, okay, let's have Bible study, right? Let's have a Bible study on tonight. So we sent out the link to everyone and um, to come out on the Zoom call tonight. And as you can see, there's very few of us, right? And the other day, just the other day, as a matter of fact, Monday, 
I sent out a, a text message to the uh, young men in the church and I said, hey, listen, I'm going to open the gym and come on out. Let's play some basketball. And uh, even though it was a short notice, I mean, like 15 to 20 guys showed up to play. And then those, uh, out of those eight or nine that were from UCF, they invited another 10 of their friends uh, from other churches or from school or from work or whatever the case may be. What am I trying to say? Uh, their priority is they, they like to play basketball. They want to play basketball. So when it came to basketball, even in a short notice, they are willing to not just come themselves, but share with their friends and say, come on, come with me. Let's go play basketball. But when it comes to the word of God, when it comes to spending time with God, not only can we really not get them to come out, right? But we can't even get them to invite their friends out either. So you have to ask yourself when you start talking about the word of God and what it means to you. So what is your priority? Um, is the word of God that meaningful to you? And when I talk about the word, the word of God really is Jesus Christ. So when you say that you want to have a relationship with Jesus, that means you have to have a relationship with the word, which he is the word of God. So how can you have a relationship with Jesus if you don't want to spend time in the Bible, if you don't want to spend time learning the word of God? And that's all we're talking about tonight. We're just talking about spending time with the Lord, spending time in the word of God. So there, you know, there, there are, um, there are three areas, and then I'll get out of your way, that I really want you to think about when you start talking about spending time with Jesus, right? You have to spend time in the word. Let's talk about that first. In your Bible, ask yourself tonight. Ask yourself, like, how often did you have you read the Bible in the last week, in the last seven days? How many times have you really, honestly, um, you don't have to, you don't have to, I mean, I'm no judge, so you got to be honest with yourself. But how many times have you picked up the Bible in this last week and actually read scripture? Not just glanced over it, but actually picked it up and read something to remembrance. Read something that you said, I'm going to read this and ask the Lord, how does this apply to me? Hmm. Boy, if that, I, I would call on your names, but I don't want to put you on the spot because it's only like three of us, okay? But I know <clears throat> that you understand what I'm talking about. Then, so in the word, in the word, you have to ask yourself, how much time have I really spent in God's word, okay? And then secondly, in your worship, in your worship, right? In your worship, how much time have you really spent worshiping the Lord? I'm not talking about when you came to church on Sunday and the songs were real good and you jumped into that favorite song of yours and you start to lift your hands. That is all wonderful. But I'm talking about how much personal time. Like today, for example, I was at work and I turned on YouTube and man, I put on my favorite artists and I let the songs rip and I just went in praising the Lord, giving God praise. Amen. Right at work. I'm just talking about what I'm talking about, but I'm just asking you, how much time have you spent really in the last seven days worshiping the Lord? Mm. So. In order to be a good disciple, you have to spend time in the word. In order to be a good disciple, you have to spend time in your worship. And also, to, in order to be, be a good disciple, you have to spend time in the work. In the work. And I know I'm talking to young people, but I'm going to tell you, uh, this is challenging even for adults. Because when you start talking about the work of the Lord, uh, you know, adults tend to have so many other responsibilities that mm, they may not do it intentionally, 
but the work of the church, the work of the Lord, sometimes is on is not the first thing that they consider because it's not really in their minds. I'm talking about adults right now. In our minds, it may not be considered the priority. But the reality is, in God's eyes, it should be our priority. We should always be telling others about the goodness of Christ. We should always be sharing the word of God. It's called spreading the gospel. It's talking about telling the good news, the good news of Jesus Christ. And whenever we get an opportunity, we should do that with our friends and with our family. Um, sometimes the Holy Spirit will open up opportunities where it may be someone you don't even really know. But God will open up an opportunity for you to be able to share the gospel. And so that's what I'm saying to you tonight. In order to be a good disciple, young people, we have to spend time in the word of God. In order to be a good disciple, we have to spend time in our worship. Yeah, I'm talking about the word. I know this going to cut some people when they do see it. Oh, yeah. Because even the Bible says it cuts sharper than any two of that sort. So, yeah. Um, hey, it's slicing on me, too. Don't feel bad. Uh, because there's part of me that feels like I, I, I want to spend more time in the word. And sometimes I don't spend enough time in the word when that's just how I feel. But that's my personal, uh, that's my personal conviction. What is yours? What is your conviction as it pertains to being a great disciple, being a good disciple, being a disciple? So this is what I want you to take from this tonight. This is what I want you to take from this tonight. You have to spend time in God's word. You have to spend time in his presence, which is worshiping him. And then you have to spend time in the work, the spreading of the good news, the spreading of the gospel, the gospel of Jesus Christ, which is the word of God. Amen. So come on, somebody tell me what you took from this Somebody unmute and tell me what you took from this and how you're going to apply it to your own life. Come on, you can unmute. Unmute. Tell me what you took from this and how you're going to apply it. Don't you make me call your names. Um, what I took from this is yeah. that that I need to make sure I need to balance out my personal, my personal, I don't want to say necessities, but like activities with God's word more than I'm doing now just to make it equal. Okay, that's good. That's good. Great answer. Great answer. Yes. Uh, is Destiny there? Or is she busy? Yes, yeah, she is. She just, she being quiet on me tonight? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you didn't get anything from this? Destiny? Destiny, come over here. Nobody <laughs> explain to you. You, you didn't get anything? I did. Wait, what, 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 so what, so what did you get from, from what, from what we talked about tonight? What did you get? That people only put what they want, um, in front of them and they just put like God behind them and they don't really pay attention to him. So we have to manage our time. Yeah. Okay. okay. Here, mom. Okay. <laughs> Okay, that's, that's good. What I'm doing with. 
that's it. That's what I, I just want to. <laughs> She's all right. <laughs> um, so, um, yeah, so with that being said, um, Laura or Sister Marlon, do y'all have anything y'all want to share or y'all okay? No, I'm good. Laura, Laura. That's one of my favorite um, scriptures, actually. So I'm good. Okay. <laughs> I, I know Laura. I know Laura's working at the church, so she's busy right now. Yeah. Um, but um, so like I said, I, I promise you guys I wasn't going to keep you long. And I really appreciate it. I'm going to pray God's blessing upon you for sacrificing and coming on out tonight. Amen. Amen. And then um, uh, we'll, so I'm going to close this out in prayer. And uh, Philemon, do you have any questions for me? No, sir. Okay. And Destiny, no questions? <laughs> she, she left to loop the room. She went in the kitchen. It's all good. It's all good. Okay, let's pray. All right. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you, Father God, for uh, this time that, that we were able to spend together in your word, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Father God. For, you know, we learn, Father God, that your word is quick, it's powerful, and it's sharp, Lord. It's sharper than any two-edged sword, as a matter of fact. And, Lord, we know that it cuts coming and going, Father God. But we know that in order for us to get better, we have to spend time in your word. We understand, Father God, that there's some things in our lives that need to be cut off, that need, that need to be cut with the word so that we can be the children of God that you call us to be, that we can walk in the call that you have for our life, that we can do what you have called us to do. And so, Lord, we thank you for sharing on tonight um, that, Father God, that, that we realize, Father God, that we... Um, can balance these things out, uh, these life activities, Father God, that we can balance them out and not put you on the back, but put you on the front. For you said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all of his righteousness, and then these other things will be added unto us. And so, Lord, we pray that you would give us that focus, that we will keep you first. And so, Lord, on tonight, Father God, I lift up my brother Philemon to you. I pray that you continue to strengthen him and, uh, spiritually, mentally, and physically, Father God. And there's some things that he may be asking for, desiring. And, Lord, we touch and agree with him tonight, Father God. And we pray that you would step in and meet those prayer concerns tonight. And then I lift destiny to you. Tonight, Lord, in the name of Jesus, even in her being shy, Father God, we know that she brings about a strength, Father God, that is what you want to do with her life and use her for the upbuilding of the kingdom. And so, Lord, we pray, Father God, that you would continue to strengthen her spiritually, mentally, and physically, Father God, in the name of Jesus. And then, Lord, uh, we pray for Sister Marlon, Father God, that she continue to uh cover the family uh, as she has done very well and continue father god to to keep that balance as it pertains to her uh to her girls and then lord i thank you for laura i know she's putting in the work and so lord we thank you father god but like you like we said on tonight you have to be in the word you have to be in your presence which is our worship but then lord we also have to put in the work father god which is the ministry and so lord we thank you for tonight we praise you tonight and we honor you, Father God, for truly you are worthy to be praised. We just want to be a the best disciple, the child of God that you call us to be. We love you. We praise you. And we give you thanks. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 All right, you guys. Y'all are so wonderful. Thank you. We're going to do this again. Um, and... Uh, We'll, we'll let you know how that's going to go down, though. <laughs> All right, you guys. I'll see y'all. Y'all have a good night. Have a good night, everybody. Good night. You too. Bye. Bye.